Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Hi, this is Mike O'Mara here to remind you that if you're starting a business, forming an LLC, or getting a will, LegalZoom will provide the personal attention you need to help take care of the details. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but provides self-help services at your specific direction. Enter discount code TMOS for more savings at LegalZoom. demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeOMaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Oscar, as a D.C. resident, I'd like to play a guessing game with you. I'm Please. saying that you're a D.C. resident, yes. not myself. Uh, the council member of Ward 8. Yes. Mayor Barry, what kind of car do you think he drives? Oh, Year and God. brand. A 300C. No, he, that's me. Uh, uh, he drives a <laughs> 2002 X-Type Jaguar. Ooh. And it's been unlucky for him because he got in a small altercation, a traffic incident yes. over the weekend, and they realized he had over $2,800 in outstanding tickets. Oh, my So l- let's give him a call and see if he has anything he wants to say about it. It's a lot of outstanding tickets. And what he did is he blamed the accident on a hypoglycemic attack. So obviously, either high or low b- blood yeah, sugar yeah, yeah. I get, I get brought it on, yeah, totally. and uh, you know you're not of right mind, and perhaps your mm. uh, your senses are dulled. Uh, hello. Hey. Uh, can you call me right back? I, I'm on the party. I'll call you back. Oh, okay. But we have this okay. set up. Oh man. Stop the music. Mm. So, wow, we're calling him right back. <laughs> he said right back. <laughs> he was a. Uh, Maybe, he had parked next to a fire hydrant. Maybe he was in cleanup mode. Oh yeah. Oh. Now he's now hopefully he's ready. Do you think he's a uh, strictly toilet paper guy, or do you think he uses the wet ones? Definitely too? wipes. We'll have to ask him. <laughs> yeah, Mary <laughs> residence. What sort of phone do you have? Mary, that, Mary yes, speaking. What kind of phone do you have that doesn't interrupt the ring when you pick up? <laughs> <laughs> Special phone. <laughs> um, Excuse me, the milkman's coming to the door. Can I call you back? Uh, you call me back, but you give me a call back in five minutes, me, right? Sure. Bye. <laughs> there he goes. In the He's, I didn't realize he still had the, uh, still had a milkman. I didn't know the milkman still came. Like, it just, can you get it in D.C.? I don't even know if they deliver. I think it's probably Tompkins Dairy. Okay. Uh, they're an old company. Jesus. And I, uh, I think they probably, he probably takes, uh, milk. Cream. All right, here we go. Half and half. <laughs> Probably has his milk. Peaches. There we go. Oh, uh, man. I'm sorry. I can't have my cinnamon crunch without my milk. What? Mayor, if you like so me I, having that. Uh, well, so what do you mean? I should be having what? Cinnamon Toast Crunch with the beaties? That's awesome. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, it's the best cereal in the world. It's tasty. It gets me going. It starts my day the right way. But it has a lot of uh, sugar. Hello. Who am I speaking with? This. Oh, well, you, it's a setup interview. We set this up. It's Rob Spiewak. Oh, that's right. You are Oscar Rob Spiewak. Hey. Rob Spiewak. Hey. And Oscar Santana. And Oscar Santa. Os- I'll take Oscar. Yeah. I'll take All him. right, that's right. Hi, boys. How are you? Before we get into your week, I do have one question. Sure. Um, when, uh-huh. you, when you finish up Big Potty. Yeah. Well, I'm all done with Big Potty. I did Big Potty, and then the milkman came, and then I put the milk on my cinnamon crunch. But do you use wet wipes? That's my breakfast routine. That's or my dry. morning routine. That I, that I, you know, down here in Ward 8, you got to have routine. That's uh, the whole thing. I say to people, if you want to be successful in life, yes. you have to have routine. Routine is uh, schedules, uh, right. showing up on time, yeah. punctuality. Uh, <laughs> what was you know, the last the, thing? I'm writing these down. Punctuality. Oh, you want to be punctual? Punctuality. You know what I'm talking about? Being on time. Sure. Man, like when right? we called oh, man, that's you what I'm talking and you about. were on, in the toilet. That's right. That's Mayor, right. Was, Mayor. Uh, yes. Hello. Hello, uh, Oscar. We have to address as as a... What as, ward are you in, Oscar? I'm in Ward 3. 
Ooh, fancy, fancy pantses. Oh, wow, fancy pantsy. As a resident of the district uh, sure. and as a, uh, a tax-paying resident that pays more taxes than I ever have in my life. Congratulations I, and thank you for your support of the great district of Columbia. I would say that when I saw the story break that, one, I was concerned about the accident, and then, two, yes. found out you were okay and realized that you I'm hadn't fine. paid uh, a really... An erroneous amount of uh, traffic tickets. Well, not an erroneous I amount. Mean, a, an egregious amount. Egregious, egregious. Yeah. Egregious, yes. Uh, egregious, that's the word. Uh, you, why, yeah. don't you, why don't you pay your parking tickets? Uh, I just don't think that they're legitimate. Um, you know, I'm a public servant. And a public servant, unfortunately, I've got uh, people to see all over the city. Especially over Ward 8. Now, being right. a D.C. county, uh, D.C. councilman, I have to go from uh, house to house. And sometimes people call and say, uh, Councilman Bay, we need to see you right away. And I yes. put my jag up, uh, you know, outside. And I'll put it on a, you know, in a fire zone. Or I put it in a, you know, in the uh, park, no parking maybe. area. I won't have a particular uh, sticker. And so, because I have to go down and counsel these people and give them, uh, you know, give them God. Do you message. Think, That's do what you, I have to Message do. of God, really? <laughs> Do yes, you, do you and think I, sometimes car... I bring a box of cinnamon crunch cereals just you to, think... you know, to say thank you. Do you think that the car is bad luck? The Jag? Yeah. Yeah, goddamn British piece of crap is what it is. Yeah, I'm because so it's frustrated been, with it. It's been I don't stolen. Like I should have gotten, well, should have gotten a Bentley. Uh, that's what I would have liked to have. I was working on that when I was mayor. I was on my way to getting two Bentleys, but unfortunately we all know what that happened. Yeah, I do. Bitch set me up. That's what happened with <laughs> I, that. I remember, I'm looking here over the story, it says that after your traffic accident this weekend, you were spotted with the rear bumper dragging. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's right. I mean, I said, you have a choice. You can get that metallic sound, dragging sparks flying all over Ward 8, and I'm saying to myself, what do I do? Do I do I drag this home, or do I put it on the side of the road? I'm saying, I'm not going to put it on the side of the road. It's a bad neighborhood. Now, I read about this in the Washington Post. I'd like to quote yes. the article if I can. It uh, says, who wrote it? Washington Post, where they, you know how they write. Uh, they're, they're crappy. They're, you know, I, they don't realize the fact that I'm immortal. And when I die, eventually, which I'm going to do, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to haunt them. How I'm gonna that haunt them. I'm gonna start with that that Tony Kornheiser. How I'm gonna float sound? over his head and I'm gonna I'm gonna bite his eyes out. That's what, what? I'm gonna do. Wow. Yeah, so you're yeah, not man. a He's a sports guy. You yeah, know, I is. just don't like his attitude. Yeah. It says in the Washington Post that <laughs> yeah. that Barry's camp has remained mum on the tickets. Now I was unaware that you had a camp. Oh, I do. I have a large camp. Mm. I have a large camp only in the summertime. Uh, we got a great camp. It's uh, out near Meriwether Post Pavilion. Oh, in Columbia. Uh, we're out there. Yeah, we got a little uh, section of land. Uh, you can go and see uh, the tents. We have tents set up to say MB, and it's a great camp. Uh, both adults and children can come out. We got great counselors. I have bus service, that, uh, small buses that we drive out to the camp. And Short we buses? have fires and toast marshmallows and have sleep? s'mores and all Is that. Is it sleepaway yeah. camp? A sleepaway camp, yeah, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be any other way. I wouldn't have. That's how you really have a good time, a good experience with camp. And uh, you know, rain has been a problem. Sure, uh, we don't care for that. But uh, you can come to Marion Berry Camp. Just take a ride at Meriwether Post Pavilion. Walk right through where the people sit, and just keep going into the woods. Mayor, that's it, about I, about a mile in. About a, about a mile in. <laughs> Marion Berry Camp. Th this question has, pl <laughs> has plagued you for your entire political career. Yes. Are, are, are you above the law? Let me gather myself for a second. Yeah, before you answer that. I got that. myself with walk a mile in. <laughs> so you just, so you just, <laughs> we don't have any signs because it's not real summer camp if no, you have signs. You, you walk gotta, into this you got to use your, your compasses and, and leave breadcrumbs and things like that so there, you know where you're going. Are there any activities at the camp? Oh, yes. <laughs> really? Uh, well, uh, my camp is mum on, on the, the activities most of the time, but uh, let me unmum them right now and yeah. just tell you that uh, the camp, uh, the activities are fun. We have archery. Oh, that can't be safe. We have kickball, uh, archery, kickball, of course, uh, lunch. Lunch is, is good. Uh, uh, open and open fire. We, uh, we roast uh, we weenies. We roast weenies. weenies. And, uh, yeah, we have weenie roasts and uh, no burgers because uh, uh, we had a grease fire about uh, about, about a year ago. It didn't work horrible, out too well. But if you want to come to the camp, uh, there's no need to register. Just uh, go to Meriwether Post Pavilion, take a left into that parking lot, walk where the concerts normally are. Now, if a concert's going on, you're out of luck because uh, we aren't allowed to use the facility right. uh, where we, we're about a mile in. They don't want us to have that when the concert's Why going on. Why is your concert in Maryland and not in D.C.? Camp. I'm a camp. I, uh, the, you mean the, the camp in yes, Maryland? Camp. I, well, I'll tell you because that was the only land that I could find. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I had a beautiful spot I picked out on the Anacostia River, but unfortunately uh, the city father said, no, you can't do this. I said, oh, another goddamn controversy. So exactly. I go to Maryland. <laughs> yeah. How do you like that? And uh, we haven't, uh, I haven't filled out any paperwork or anything like that. <laughs> no, of course not, because it's yeah. camp. 
Yeah, so just remember, left turn, Meriwether Post, walk into the pavilion, keep walking about a mile into the woods after that, and you'll see the tents that say MB on them. Uh, we got them a magic marker, big old MB that say that. You wrote that? Uh, They're secondhand yeah. tents like from the war, aren't they? Yeah, well, I mean, you boys doing anything this evening? You could come out. Uh, you know, it should be a lot of fun. I think you should come by because, uh, uh, what's this, Tuesday? Let yeah. me look at my calendar. Oh, yes, Mayor Barry Camp's uh, Tuesday evening story time. <laughs> It's the Mike O'Mara Show. You can listen to the Mike O'Mara Show at www.mikeomarashow.com. Stay tuned. We're not standing entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Mike O'Mara Show. Let's get down to business. We're on the entertainment capital of the world. Hi. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like a ham and cheese omelet or wham fries. I'm sorry. We stopped serving breakfast, but we are on the lunch menu now. I want breakfast. Well, you can't have it. We're not serving it. Hi. I'd like some breakfast. We stopped serving breakfast. I know you stopped serving breakfast, Rick. Sheila told me you stopped serving breakfast. Why am I calling you by your first names? I don't even know who you are. I don't want to be your buddy, Rick. I just want a little breakfast. We stopped serving breakfast at 11.30. Rick, have you ever heard the expression, the customer is always right? Yeah. Yeah, well, here I am, the customer. That's not our policy. You have to order something from the lunch menu. I don't want lunch. I want breakfast. Yeah, well, hey, I'm really sorry. Yeah, well, hey, I'm really sorry, too. Oh, my God! It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Mike O'Mara loves Speedwack. Oscar Santana. And now, from his easy chair, here's Mike. <laughs> oh, careful there. <laughs> oh, it's Ebola. It's Ebola. Jeez. Oh, my God. Live from the Gabby Viber Studios and heard worldwide, this is the Mike O'Mara Show. We are powered by Encore Insurance Services with over 24 million downloads. Heard daily at MikeOmeraShow.com and exclusively over the air on the mighty 1630 KCJJ in the heart of the heartland. That uh, flamethrower, that KCJJ flamethrower goes right into Dubuque, Iowa. And when oh, you go to Dubuque, Dubuque you yeah. got to say hi to Aaron Oliver, our listener of the day. Hello, Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Aaron Oliver, nice to have you. Aaron Oliver, uh, very nice to have you uh, on the show today. Uh, the Michael Mary Show is a daily podcast and radio show with the greatest listeners on the planet. Why? Huh? Because they get it. Ah. Now, you know, Aaron, I hope you're listening today, Aaron, because <laughs> Aaron would like Harry's. <laughs> he would love Harry's. Aaron would enjoy Harry's. I want to just say thank you. To my, uh, I call him my nephew. He's really technically my cousin. Okay. Once removed or something. He's my cousin Teddy's son. Okay. Ben. And you know I love Ben. You know he's a great kid. He's a right. wonderful guy. And he's living out in uh, the Bay Area now. So he's out there in that uh, Northern California world. And he got himself a package from Harry's Shave Cream and uh, Shave. Uh, well, it's Harry's.com. Right. Because he got Shave Cream. He got the razor. He got the three razor blades. And he is now a loyal Harry's customer. And if you haven't noticed lately, razor blades are outrageous. Too much expensive. Oh, yeah. Too outrageous much. Too much. People. Enter Harry's.com. They were started by two guys who wanted to do a better product without having to pay a small fortune to get one. Harry's makes their own blades. They got a uh, factory over in Germany that works great. And the thing is, when you go into the store, how many years ago did we all start walking into your local drugstore and saying, why in the name of all that is wonderful are razor blades so expensive? Expensive and locked behind plexiglass. No, thank well, you. Harry's uh, razors are better for your face and your wallet because they are about half the price of other big brand blades. This is an opportunity for you to support the Mike O'Mara show and show the people at Harry's that you care about us. The starter set is an amazing deal. Listen to this. I am not exaggerating. Fifteen dollars. You get the razor. It's beautifully crafted. Mm -hmm. You get moisturizing shave cream, which is the expensive kind, the yes. kind that you get normally in the high-end shaving centers in those high-end malls. And you get three razor blades with free shipping. It's an incredible deal. Why are you paying 32 bucks or more for an eight-pack of blades when it's half that price at Harry's? On average, an everyday shaver will save $150 a year on blades using Harry's instead of other blades. And remember, Harry's blades are the best. Experience a clean, close, comfortable shave today with Harry's. Go to harrys.com now. They will even give you another $5 off. Yes. If, if you type in our code, TMOS, that's $10 to get that incredible shave kit. You have to do this. H 
A-R-R-Y-S dot com and enter the coupon code TMOS at checkout for this limited time offer and start shaving better today at Harry's. I use it every single day. You know the difference between uh, my expensive blades and the Harry's blade? What's that? It's four. It's got four of the little yes, blades. Yes, it does. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Am I describing it right when you've got the It's uh, four thing? blades and one sort of cartridge, the Harry's yeah. cartridge, and the razor itself, the handle that's whole it's it's the best thing I've ever held in my hand, Mike. No, that's overstating it. I don't know. It's pretty yeah, good. Anyway. <laughs> uh, welcome to uh, wet South uh, West South Florida. Uh, we we got our rain. The rain is here. I've never seen it like this down here, and it's a little exciting. It's uh, pretty much tomorrow. I could be coming to you saying, "Hello, this is Pablo. I'm at the bottom of the pool right now." It's uh, it's very it's very exciting to travel thousands of miles and be in a totally different ecosystem. Now, is it a monsoon? Is it a hurricane? What do they no, call it? No, today we we got a reprieve from it but yesterday a uh, there were parts of the area that i live in that got uh, six plus inches mm, of rain wow interesting a lot of places were flooded uh the cocoonville was not flooded here it was okay we uh, we survived so uh we're doing we're doing well so it was a uh, not only a flood how but does the canal look behind you it must look uh, like a raging river no it doesn't flow it doesn't flow <laughs> It doesn't flow, Rob. Oh, that's sad. It's getting older. It's sedentary water. It's a, it's a <laughs> like standing it's a water. Lake. It's like a lake. You know, I, it's a lake system. I thought it was like the uh, the uh, the river in Los Angeles, that big cavern of, of concrete, and then the water no. flew by at a rapid rate. No, and it wasn't like uh, Vegas the other day where they showed that yes. video of uh, the cars that getting scary. flipped away. So mm-hmm. very very scary and uh, odd weather all over the United States. Uh, you know, climate change is real. Everybody knows that. And you know, we got the wildfires. I was watching a chart today on. Uh, the Today Show that Rob and I are addicted to mm-hmm. and lazy because we do not change anything mm-hmm. and we don't want to. Uh, we really don't want to expand our horizons. I'm ready to make the plunge. By the way, when you do, I'm ready to uh, step you know off. Please. Carson Daly, you know Carson what, Daly, He's Rob, the best Carson thing on that Daly. Show. I've been. Oh, spending... for, of course you like him, Johnny Pop Culture. Of course you like I've that. I've been spending a lot of time with our friends at Channel Five in the morning. I give the Today Show the first ten minutes, then I'm back over to Channel Five. You know what my new complaint on the Today Show is? What's is, that? Uh, Al Roker will do some horrible pun. Like today, because it's hard hitting news, they showed yeah. a baby seal on a surfboard mm. for oh, like yeah. a minute and, and a half. Meteorological seal. And he says, right. and I've got the meteorological seal of approval. And some jackass right. from off camera goes, ah! <laughs> <laughs> It's probably his producer. <laughs> and it makes me want to go up and burn the building down. <laughs> it is, it, you know, there's no secret that it's become uh, much less hard news. Yeah. And, you know, Rob and I watched the Today Show Oscar. We've explained this before for one reason. Yeah, you one guys reason got me into the Today Show because I said, well, if I can't beat him, I guess I'll join him. Yeah. Well, in 15 minutes, you can get that little summary. Yeah. I watch it for one reason. It's it's convenient. I know it's going to be right there at 7, and they're going to give me, if there's anything overnight or anything early, early in the morning that happened, it's going to be there. I'm becoming suspect, though, of that because they will lead with fluffy things like the yep. people that, you know, sank a boat off the coast of Hawaii and, uh, you know, and got picked up and a kid got it all on his GoPro. You wouldn't believe you know. how they got footage of this. And then Al Roker's producer goes, ah! <laughs> right. And tip of the t- tip of the cap to uh, Oscar Santana for being so incredibly and really more more like his girlfriend Shannon who got him this device yes being so ahead of the curve as they were promoting drones and drones and more drones and they've had like 10 drone stories in the last month yeah yeah, yeah. I think Kerry Sanders uh, is married to a drone now isn't he (laughs) did you see the Today Show I actually when Kerry Sanders was experimenting with the mosquitoes that gave me the, uh, nausea. That was. Did the, you see when Carson was ru- rubbing the various creams and ointments on his wrist, I, and Carrie <laughs> Sanders was trying to like play it straight? But in my <laughs> now, look, I have no idea of the sexuality of Carrie Sanders. I am making an assumption, but it seemed to me that when Carson Daly was over there rubbing salves, like, uh, salves and ointments and creams. lotions and 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 bug bite preventatives on uh on on Carrie's uh, arm, it looked to me like Carrie was uh, getting a little flush. He was mm. he was very excited that he chose a career in broadcasting. Uh, what happened, Oscar? <laughs> Thank you, Carson. They, Rub it a little harder. They Thank had you, a Carson. plexiglass Thank box full of mosquitoes. Yes. And there was an app that uh, supposedly would prevent I mosquito saw the bites, promos for this. And yeah. he held his arm in there, and they just ate him alive. Oh, And that's, no. that's the And he didn't news. care because Carson was going to rub the uh, bug bite yeah. stuff on him. Yeah, you know, in, yeah. The, uh, in rehearsal, he didn't put his hand in there. 
Yeah. I don't care how many times I don't care how many times I get bitten because Carson's gonna put the repellent on me right after this bit's over. It's Carrie Sanders and the swelling. (laughs) At one point yesterday. We have no earthly idea what proclivity Carrie Sanders had. And a marvelous Mike a marvelous reporter. Uh, exactly. Terrific job. Does a great I job at the different amusement parks. I saw a shot because they were celebrating Hoda's uh, 50th birthday. Yes, yeah, 50th anniversary, anniversary of being 20, wasn't it? And um, she was on the couch with Carson, and it was all women and Carson in the middle. I didn't even know what that shot was all about, but they were breaking everything down. Of, and it was funny because they were all talking about being close to 50 or being like maybe a, uh, sure. 10 years away from 50. And they sat there, and I was like... What what are they talking about? Like, and it's Carson. I didn't know where anyone else was. That's right. That was Savannah there because Savannah's twelve months pregnant, and so she, well, she was there. I saw, at I any saw, time. She's definitely showing. She is. I would really, I would welcome some kind of alternative. Uh, my buddy Tony's not on in the morning anymore, Miss so him. I don't go to that because he's on. A, you know, in the and incidentally, speaking of Tony, stay tuned. What there's gonna be there's gonna be some Tony talk this week. Very exciting about that. Uh, Two scoops. I just like an alternative. I you know I've tried them all. I've tried CBS. I've tried ABC and, uh, you know, I've tried CNN and it just doesn't really do it for me. I want to get my information. What what kind of Fox affiliate do you have down there? Because obviously the Fox affiliates do their local news locally. So do you have an opportunity down here? Down here? Down no, there? I haven't been down here long enough to really clue in. They're all actually pretty good. Yeah, and I bet so. I really looking, haven't had so. a chance to really. Uh, well, they 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 all have their their strengths. I think maybe the uh, the NBC affiliate down here has pretty good weather. Okay, and they their weather down here uh, is serious business. They have much more detailed uh, rain analysis, and and I think it's the whole hurricane deal that sure. they have to be prepared oh, absolutely. for. And they take it very, very seriously. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're talking about tenths of an inch of rain. They measure it all over the area. And the radar is superb, and you know what you're going to get, and you know when you're going to get it. So, uh, you know, yesterday with this whole stomach issue that I had, I was pretty laid up. And uh, up until showtime today, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm just disgusting right now. I, I'm mean? sitting here. I just feel nasty. I feel out of it. I woke up with a low-grade headache. My temperature is not high. It's low, which I read, uh, which I made the mistake of going online and <laughs> reading. Yeah. I made the mistake of going online and reading about that. Get your but, t- Mike, get your papers in order just in case. It sucks. It sucks because I What is your I body temperature? 97.1. That that still classifies, I think that qualifies as normal. It doesn't yeah, it? it was 96.9 and then it was 97.1. Sure, both great stations. Mm-hmm. 97.1. That's not it's, the, it's the temperature. Every I don't think it's horrible at all. It's better no. than being 99.8, yeah, which I was exactly. over the weekend. Get exactly. a blanket. Um, so I finally pulled the trigger. I'm going to the doctor, which I hate. I said, doctor. I swear to, you. to relieve the belly ache. I, I said, said doctor. doctor. So, uh, yeah, heading out to the doctor today. Yesterday was uh, done with the show. Uh, Oscar, uh, a lot of people don't realize this. Oscar made me cry yeah. uh, before the show. And no, so please. I actually ended up going to bed. And, uh, and 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 just spending the day in bed, and I was all I was just all out of sorts. Don't laugh, Mac. He did. He made me cry. Yeah. After you didn't see it, but he made me cry. There's he no made me crying. Cry like, oh, no, boy. there's no crying in podcasting. No. When you lay down, were you on your side? Fetal no, position? I didn't make me cry. I just made me hate him a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, yes. Go, fetal what, Rob, what fetal position. Saying? What kind of pain were you in yesterday? Um, what was your pain it, level? It was the same thing that I kind of feel today. It was this overall. Uh, just malaise where sure. you just run down and you feel, and then um, uh, all I ate, I've been on a liquid diet basically. I've eaten. Are you ready for this? Yeah, yogurt and water is what I've had for the last two days. It's a terrific way to wow. lose a little weight. Mike, after, yogurt and water is what I've been eating. After you called the doctor, did you call a plumber? <laughs> <laughs> because I just hope that ain't Activia. I had a child's meal for uh, dinner last night. I had buttered. Wheat noodles mm. last night. That's that's all. That is uh, so. I can tell you that's what I, I have had: yogurt, I have had applesauce, and I have had buttered uh, wheat noodles in the last twenty four hours. Almost that is my uh, that is my diet. What do they call it uh, for kids that are sick? The brat diet. It's uh, bananas, rice, applesauce, and I forget what the tea is. Toast. Toast. Exactly. There you didn't go. Didn't even go with the toast. There I didn't go. want to deal with the toast. So I'm sorry, uh, Mike. The, the, according to Carrie, the tea is for tiramisu. I don't know why my kids, <laughs> my kids have stomach distress all the time. But the thing is, uh, after I made the phone call today to go to the doc doc, uh, 
I think I turned a corner. I'm not going to go into the gory details of how I turned that corner, but there's a particular activity that takes place that sure. uh, approaches normalcy, and uh, that's very exciting. Tremendously exciting, as a matter of fact. Uh, but I'm still going to go just to see, you know, see how I'm doing and get a, you know, get an expert. He's a brainiac, this doctor. So I'm very excited about going to him. Wait, what? Where, where do Should you weigh in on uh, antibiotics? Because some doctors prescribe them all the time. How, when's the last time you did a course of antibiotics? Uh, you know, about an hour ago. No, I, no, the, no. I, <laughs> no, I mean, it's just, it, I don't know. I think they're good and bad. I, I know you can become immune and stuff like sure. that. But the fact is that uh, with this particular situation, um, they work miracles. They really do. They, they actually work. But I've also read a lot more this time about it, about letting it run its course. And if I wasn't feeling just kind of like overall out of it, I would maybe consider doing that. And I hope that I go in there and he said, yeah, just let it run its course. If it continues to get bad, we'll do something. But I think I'm going to be okay. So it's uh, it's just a You it's look a pain better today. I, you do, and you sound do much I? better. Yeah. yeah. Much more I know energetic. I feel better. I know yeah. I feel more with it. Yesterday I was completely out of it. If you if you noticed, uh, I went back and listened to a little bit of it, and uh, I've never been that kind of like wobbly uh, doing uh, doing this particular show. Been uh, wobbly doing other shows before because when you get up at uh, four thirty in the morning to do a show, it's a different story entirely. But uh, I wanted to ask, yeah, I feel you know, pretty good. Question about when you used to do the morning show, and you did morning show two incarnations for years. Yep. Did you ever get to a point when you got up if you didn't even know you were sick yet? Because if you're getting up at 3.30 or 4 in the morning, you probably feel lousy almost every morning when you get up. There yeah. are times when you have to actually get to work and feel worse. Did that ever happen? The, the worst part of doing a morning show is the fact that uh, you, know, you really don't have any time to evaluate. You know, right. If you're sick in the afternoon, you're going to be getting up at 3.30 in the morning, so you just don't know. It's a, you know, for all the people that you look, and all the criticism that we give these people on shows like the Today Show, those people are doing something that every doctor in the world would say is unnatural, mm -hmm. medically unnatural, by, by launching themselves out of sleep. It doesn't matter if they go to bed at 7.30 or 8 o'clock at night. What they're doing is kind of unnatural, and thank you, Makeup, for, uh, for covering them up. But I, I, you can see them certain days. Uh, the one, uh, you know, God rest her soul, she's yes. still alive. The one who, who never got used to it was Ann Curry. Oh, and right. we would talk about the fact that you would see her just going, you know, it's kind of like the mouth doesn't work. It's the same effect when somebody's really in a cold temperature and they can't get their <laughs> mouth working in the morning. And that's what... But, uh, you know, what I did in the first incarnation of the morning show, I did it with caffeine. And, yeah. And uh, that's not a good way to go either. It's terrible. Sleepy Ann Curry. I remember that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, she would be yeah. really super like, she'd kind of be talking like, <laughs> yeah. like Ann, yeah. wake up. Have some more caffeine. Thanks, uh, Matt. Uh, yeah. Now, Today. now uh, yeah, she's in like Kuala Lumpur now. Who knows? Uh, we'll take a break. Come back with more on the Michael Maris Show. I'm going to tell you all about my daughter and her fabulous road trip that I am terrified about. Oh. Uh, we'll do that when we come back on the Mike O'Mara Show. I'm Oscar Santana. And I'm Todd Moore. And we're trying to bridge the gap between entertainment and technology. And we're doing it right now. Yes. And we're much better than Rob Spiewak. F you, Rob. Listen to Tech 4 and one That's available on MichaelMaraShow.com. Or find us on iTunes. Just search for Tech 4 and one Show. More Broadcasting. For more information, visit us at MoreBroadcasting.com. That's the is that like the first one you guys did? What a wasted youth! It's so great. <laughs> you know what? The dictionary definition of sourpuss. Every time a Tech Four One One promo comes out, he just twists his face up and shakes his head. Could you please make me a new promo next week? Good. Promise. Very good. Outstanding. Uh, <laughs> uh, this podcast, by the way, has no better friends than the good people at Encore Insurance Services. We always give them a round of applause. They're fantastic supporters from way back, and they can help you out, too. If you're out there shopping insurance, you know how hard it is to know which company offers the best value. Encore Insurance can help. Encore surveys the most highly rated companies in the insurance industry to compare premiums. We love Encore. You will, too. They do all the work. You don't have to. It's free. There's no obligation. Nobody's going to call on you. Nobody's going to visit you. There is no obligation. That is why I want you to call this number today, 866-347-5748, and get yourself a free life insurance quote. God knows I've seen you listeners out at yes. live shows. I know that it could happen tomorrow. You know, I'd like you to be healthier, <laughs> but I've seen the today. audiences, okay? To call get today. yourself 
Call a today. policy. If your computer ease is uh, your thing, you can go to smartterm.com. That's S M A R T T E R M dot com, and you'll find the license disclaimer and quality customer service. Encore Insurance's, uh, I'm sorry, Encore Insurance Services LLC. Check them out for us, but mostly for yourself. Stop paying too much for life insurance. You just turn the music up or something. <laughs> no, I, I'm sorry. I was reading ahead, Mike. My bad. Okay, I uh, apologize. Stop paying too much for life insurance. I like it when you just kind of ride the music and back of me that way after every sentence. Encore Insurance Services. Services LLC. Check them out for us, but mostly for yourself. Stop paying too much for life insurance. Protect your family the smart way. Smart term. Thank you. Thank you. Rob. My uh, Omera. In your vast selection of music, please to find some, if you can, yes. some Zydeco. I know I give you uh, curveballs all the time. Do you have any Zydeco okay, in, let me your, see. Uh, in your arsenal? Does this Rob count? Spiewak with the pull. That's, Rob, one of your all-time fastest turnarounds. That's, that's what threw me. It's not me. Zydeco, but it's Dixieland. Dixieland. That's what threw me during the spot. I was. I have a hunch where you're going. Well, now you know. Uh, I talked about it before the break about uh, my daughter. I literally got off the phone with her not 10 minutes ago, uh, right before. I was about a half hour ago, yeah. right before the show started. And uh, she leaves today. She has just left. Hotlanta, at the age of 19, she is going to New Orleans, Louisiana. Oh, no. Okay. I I got a chance to see her back in Virginia. I got a chance to uh, sit her on the couch and look her in the eye and tell her all about the city I love so much. The city that I visited more than most uh, people in the United Mike, States. Mike, are you referring to the, the Crescent City? The Crescent City, the city that Care forgot. That's right. Uh, it is uh, the Big Easy. Les New les bon temps roule. <laughs> New Orleans, Louisiana. And I said, uh, you know, I talked to my ex-wife about it. I talked to my daughter about it. Uh, this is one of those dilemmas you face as a parent mm -hmm. where you say to yourself, how much do you relax the reins a little bit? She's 19. She can, sure. You know, she can serve in the military. She can uh, not have a legal drink, though. That's uh, I, mean, I pointed that out to her as well. What is the, is the well, age she, the same in, in Louisiana? No, it's eighteen in Louisiana, and uh, in New Orleans, it's eighteen. How do, how do you not know that? That would be one of the reasons why it would be a destination. I <laughs> yes, would think. I thought that was just like no, Cancun. no, no, no. That's that's that's. I mean, that's why you go. That's why uh, was it. Instead of Beach Week, people go to New Orleans the French Week. Quarter. Sure. They go to the French Quarter. They hang out. Mm -hmm. I remember I had this big debate at one point because I was like, there's no way there's drinking now because everybody was uh, planning a senior trip. And everybody was 18. It's like, we can just get in the bars. And you know what? What's great down there, that's how much a beer costs is a French Quarter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mike's on the uh, telephone. Oh, excuse us. Uh, here we go. Excuse me. Oh, you're fine. How long? But you know what? It may have changed since then. Because there's, oh, federal, so. there's federal funding issues. Yeah, and they don't need it because it makes hey, so sweetheart, much money. Hey, sweetheart, how alcohol. are you? How you doing? Good, how are you? Um, I, I, so we were talking about your trip down to New Orleans, Louisiana on the uh, show. Yeah. And Oscar informed me. Uh, oh, don't throw that, me under the bus. <laughs> Oscar told <laughs> me that the, is, is the drinking age 18 in New Orleans? I, I don't think that's true. You don't think that's true. Now, Mac, why are you putting your, your finger up in the air? Go ahead, Mac. Uh, Max is going to say, you yes. can't hear these people, uh, Catherine, so just bear with us for a sec. It is 18 if you have a guardian 21 years old or older with you. That's And that's the best guardian is a 21-year-old. <laughs> <what kind of, laughs> I don't know if I want to give Catherine that information. It says here that it's 18 if you have a, a guardian that's 21. Or, what? No, she's laughing. Okay, uh, so I, I just want you to be careful. I love you. You know that, right? Yeah, I know that. Okay, but I... You know, I Okay, and do you... I'm just going, ooh, a cop just passed me. Well, I'm glad I'm going to speed limit like the... a good little girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's my daughter. Way to go to the speed limit. Just be careful and don't drink anything, okay? Okay, I won't set my drink of water down anywhere. Okay, I like to hear that. That's, That's good. That's good. And and be safe Is and... It what? No, it's no, the not. drinking age is twenty-eight. No, it's not. Your father misspoke. It's it's not eighteen. It's illegal. You'll be thrown in a New Orleans prison. You cannot. You oh, cannot. Nothing drink. worse. Okay, it's a federal law. Okay, I love you and be safe. Okay. Can you say that again? What state? Are you, what state are you going into, darling? Alabama. 
<laughs> okay. I love you. Take care. Bye, da- bye, darling. I love you. Bye. <laughs> I love my kids. I do love my kids. Alabama. Mike, Daddy I just likes got voices. The, uh, Catherine's always been able to do voices. I just I like got that. the weather for her trip to New Orleans. 60% chance of a hurricane. <laughs> In a nice tall glass. <laughs> yeah, a nice red foo foo drink. Is that guy with abs who's 22, your guardian? Yeah. She's going right, to hold Mac, up a wanna, poster I, board. I, Need 21 year old. <laughs> Mac, I didn't want to. I didn't want to discuss this on the uh, on the show with her. But when you say with a guardian, does that mean a legal guardian or anybody that she like happens to bump into that happens to be over the age of 21? The word, the wording said legal guardian. <laughs> Well, can you open it up again and get more information? Here we go. Sure. Okay. Here's initiative. Initiative, I got it. thy name I is. Got it. Thank right you, here. Oscar. Right Thank here. you. Show them how it's done. <laughs> All right. right. Uh, it says here if you go to New Orleans and you've got a legal guardian, a family member, a yep. parent that's yep. over 21 and they're with you. you, they can drink. Right. Yeah. So that's not like anybody on the street no. that happens to be over 21. Yeah, but it's not, not like a bartender is going to go out of the way and say, that's not your brother. Yeah. This is my dad, Scott. <laughs> yeah, but I just uh, look. <laughs> This is my dad, Scott. <laughs> That's the perfect name, too. Oscar, I just I had the talk with her, and she knows not to, you know. She I don't knows think a, there's a, a problem things. with her going. She's an adult. She yeah. can make her own decisions. But I will say that it's a raucous city. You will admit. Yes. To yes. And I the uh, the fact that you can drink outdoors and walk around. I don't think they're being everyone's being carted the way that they're carted. Let's say in the D.C. area. In D.C., for example, when I was, I had a fake ID. I could get into uh, the waterfront around here. That's horrible. Yeah, true enough. You know. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny, Oscar. After that little statement, I don't have a lot of peace of mind right now. I'm, so, just, uh, you know. I'm just saying, here's it's my... not doing. I mean, it sounded he starts out. Oscar starts out like he's trying to calm me down. And then he's just like, "Well, you know, they have all the open Mike, containers. You can wander around drunk. You what can you puke need on to... the sidewalk, and it's perfectly okay." What you need to focus is this: is that the fact that 19 is the drinking age? Is that it's been 19 years? Of proper parenting for true, that girl. True. She's going to be fine. You're a great she, parent. Her mom is great. And she's going to make all the right decisions. You're going to be okay. The bottom line is she had an internship uh, most of the summer uh, working in a theater with the uh, local production they were doing down there, a Patsy Klein show. And she did that the entire month of July. And so she has been working, uh, you know, and, and doing, getting college credit all summer. So now this is her two weeks. She has two weeks before she has to go back because she's an RA. So this is her two weeks to have a little bit of fun. And this is her big, fun trip. Now, the other thing uh, that I should mention is they are staying with friends of her friend's family. Mm. And apparently this is the, the, the other girl that's going with her, her buddy. Uh, these people have known the, these gentlemen oh, for years. no! I'm sorry. I, you, have to, you have to, at a certain point, trust. They're in their mid-20s. Did you call? Oh, so they're guardians. Oh, God. You know what, Mike? Why don't you just serve her up on a silver platter? No, no, you no. You see, that's a horrible thing to say. <laughs> that is a hard... He, well, you know what? He has been so friggin' heartless this week. He has. You know he that? Has. He really, really has. Oscar, I had a very long... At a certain point, and you will know this when you are a parent, you have to... You ha- you, there's. I couldn't say you are forbidden to go because we'd already played that card once yes. before with a trip out to L.A., no, which it. we I thought was... It. Well, as far as a road trip at that age, too far for her to and go. And besides Los Angeles, Mike, I just read this as a, in Los Angeles, the drinking age is 12. <laughs> so, okay. If you have a guardian. If you have a guardian. If, who's if, you have a 14 year old, if you have a 14-year-old guardian. <laughs> if you all say. I know, look, you don't think hey, that man. I reacted like that. You don't think that I reacted when I, when I saw that it was 25. Uh, and the, the, you know, when I asked the ages and stuff like that, I said, oh, my. I, I said this all to I, Catherine. You're the I coolest said this all parent I know. Let me tell you. When you attach, no, when no, you attach to Boo, when that's you. A, that's make, God, I'm going to kill him. No, I swear when to you make I'm something, flying up to D.C. No, no, Mike, him. you're fine. You need to see the doctor. Uh, the coolest <laughs> parent I know. That's a, He knows. He knows me. He knows that is the. He knows that that is the worst thing he can say. But, hey, you're like a hippie parent. Yeah. You're like a hippie parent. Pancakes for dinner. <laughs> yes, sir. You're a hippie parent. You know, like the like the Rams that used to have scrambled eggs for dinner. And Kathy would come home and go, the Rams are having breakfast for dinner. <laughs> and my father would say, well, if the Rams are going to jump off a cliff, you're going to follow them doing that, too. <laughs> you know? And then Chad hit me in the eye with a hammer, and everybody knows the history. I mean, but now I'm like, when Oscar know? calls me the cool parent, that totally freaks my ass no, out. And first, really what totally people does. don't realize, first of all, the Rams did eggs for dinner because what? They were high-functioning alcoholics, and that's the best <laughs> they could do. 
true. But Oscar, if you make something forbidden, if you make yes. it taboo, it makes it all the sweeter for the kid. Yeah. You have to sometimes give in and trust the fact that the 19 years previous, you've raised the kid right. Hey, here's the. Uh, can I, I tell you what I'm concerned about? I'm concerned that. about a couple of things. The fact is that the atmosphere in New Orleans, it is a nonstop party. It is one of the party capitals. I've always said it's yeah. one of my favorite cities it's, because it's, of that reason. It's like Herndon. And <laughs> I'll give you some peace exactly of mind. Like Trav T-shirt just went on on vacation there with his twenty uh, one year old girlfriend, right? right? And she was old uh, enough to drink. And how old is Drab now? Just out of curiosity, I think he's thirty one. He just turned thirty one. <laughs> okay, and you tell him out of boy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Very so much. he said he went out there, and he went there because I think his girlfriend wanted to go there, mm -hmm. and they went for four days. And he said, everyone said it was going to be dead because Mardi Gras, it was the Mardi Gras season. The city is never dead. And he said, it felt like it was Mardi Gras. It was just crazy. No, you mean, wait, hold on, hold on. You said, everybody said it was going to be dead All because it's Mardi Gras All his friends said it's going to be an easier time to get around, easier time. Because it's not Mardi Gras. Because it's right. not Mardi Gras season. That's what you meant to yeah, say. Yeah, that's what okay, I meant to because say. Because it's not Mardi yes. Gras. And he got down, no, that's, see, I know that for a fact. I never knew always, that. The weekends are always jumping. Now, when you get Mardi Gras, or you get a Super Bowl, right. or you get a Final Four, or you get anything that's uh, you know happening uh, downtown, it gets a little crazier. But every weekend is insane mm. in New Orleans. Yep. Then, Especially no. in the summertime. But the beauty is, is that that city knows how to handle it. You know, they can handle a big event, and it's not uh, its not preventing you from having a miserable... You, you will still have a good time, because they can handle the influx of True. people. She'll be fine. Yeah, she's going to do great, Mike. It's going to be you okay. You raise her right. I... I I, I just want her to, you know, she's going to be continuously texting me and letting me know where she is. It's just, I know, what, what is the name of the city? The city that care forgot. Well, right. I don't want her to forget how to care. God damn it. <laughs> I That's just it. hope she doesn't come home with a lot of beads. Well, speaking of that, we're going to play a little song you know, honoring the city that my daughter is going down to. Thanks for that flashing joke, Rob. I really appreciate it. Rob Spiewak, I'm going to fly to D.C. and kill you two today. <laughs> Can I hear that one again? I yeah. love talking up that. Sure, really sure, you do. bet. Yeah. yeah, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, no names, no lies. This is the Mike O'Mara Show. Yes, it's Catherine O'Mara winging it on down to New Orleans, Louisiana, the Big Easy, the city that care for God. Hey, everybody, give me a handgun because I want you to shoot me now. <laughs> on that note, we're going to take a break. We will come back with more of the uh, Mike O'Mara Show. I will tell you what lying in bed and watching uh, movies on the Sundance Film Channel does to a human being. I actually learned something yesterday that I might be able to pass on to all of you. Oh, that's nice. We'll be right back. All right. Anyway, uh, I'm probably ma not matching the music because you're playing it. Uh, but anyway, welcome back to the show. This segment of the Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by Legal Zoom. Zoom. Most Americans don't have a will, but why? You don't want the court dictating what happens to your property and minor children. Isn't that right? Am I right? Right. Huh? Right. 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 I'm right. Right. So why procrastinate? Most people say too expensive or too time consuming. I have an answer for you. It's called LegalZoom.com. Too expensive. LegalZoom's prices just make sense. Too time-consuming? It takes just 20 minutes, and LegalZoom guides you through from start to finish. The service was developed by some of the best legal minds in the country, and they make it painless for you to get the legal help you need. Folks, we tell you about a lot of different stuff on the show. When I talk about uh, life insurance, when I talk about making a will, these are wonderfully convenient places where you can improve your quality of life, mm -hmm. and you can also provide for other people. I executed my mom's will in 15 minutes. 15 it's minutes, sat down. She was making breakfast at my sister's place. We said, let's take care of this. Sat down, knocked it out. They make it painless, Oscar. Yes. That's the whole point. Easy. And, you know, everybody's so intimidated by the legal community. Uh, helping people get legally protected has been the mission at LegalZoom uh, for over 13 years. During National Make a Will Month, get special pricing on wills and living trusts by entering TMOS in the referral box at checkout. You're probably driving along right now. You're on a treadmill. You're doing something. And you're hearing this, and you're saying, wow. This might be something I need. You never know. I mean, you really should be Just prepared. Just do it. Do the it. Dis the discount code is TMOS. It's National Make-A-Will Month, so don't wait. Protect your family. Protect your future at LegalZoom.com. LegalZoom was developed by top attorneys to provide self-help services at your specific direction, but they're not a law firm. Legal help is furnished through vetted, independent attorneys. LegalZoom.com. Put in the code TMOS and get it done for a great price and have that peace of mind. We thank you in advance for that. 
Welcome back to the uh, show, Whoa, Whoa. I mentioned the fact that uh, the old diverticulitis uh, deal, it's called a flare-up, and uh, you get low abdominal pain. Sometimes you run a fever, but it really knocks you on your ass, and it's been, I think, three decades since I've had this. So, it, uh, you know, note to self, perhaps two days of 14-hour car rides, not the best thing to right. do in the world right. for your health. You don't think of it because you're sitting and you're driving a car, but I think maybe... That uh, that had something to do with it. Sure. It just uh, it took me out, and I'll have to I'll figure out a way. You know, I always do. But you know, Mike, not only it, not only is it just it's intense because you're on the road, but there's stress and there's there's uh, there's exhaustion, and I think right. that stress and exhaustion together are going to at least make it the uh, pave the road for the flare up. Exactly. Uh, well, next year we've got some solutions that I've discussed uh, with uh, Carla Mac. Uh, what is your driving record like? Is it a decent <laughs> driving record? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, very good. We'll, yeah. we'll chat. Mike, okay. Matt I went can out dr- to see. Now you hold on. He said, "I mean, yeah." He said, "Yeah, I mean." Uh, so, what is the "I mean" part? You want to fill me in? The on only that thing place? I've gotten was like HOV tickets. Ah, good boy. Okay, yeah, that means yeah, that shows initiative. I, you know, did you misspell that? Man. Was that DUI? <laughs> <laughs> I know spelling's not your strong suit, son. So yesterday I get uh, done doing the show, and I am, I mean, O-U-T, out of commission. I right. literally stagger into the bedroom. I crawl under the sheets, and I am. I say to Carla, I said, you know what? I am not going to be any use to you at all today. I am not going to be helpful to you. And what did uh, she say to that? She was, she was actually <laughs> I'm used to it. A, she was a whirling dervish yesterday. Just another Monday. She, she actually... <laughs> Well, right. Do Status yeah. quo. <laughs> That's me, lazy. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so uh, just keep it coming, Oscar, because oh, you get, come it, on. get it all out of your system this week. I'm making get it you all stronger. Out of your you yes. Make you stronger. I'll make you. you. Anyway, <laughs> okay. so uh, so Carla was great. She really great. was great because she kept coming in there and she said, you don't look right. And uh, and so I just chilled. I chilled all day long. And then I self-medicated by going on this kind of liquid thing. Uh, I did drive her to get the uh, the pets groomed. That mm. was the one thing. Hey, baby, there she goes, wearing a red and white striped top. God, when you still look at your wife like that, life is so long. Take care. She just walked by the window. I'm yeah, sure. she did. Uh, but anyway, uh, the She's leaving pets, you. No, the, no. <laughs> she'll be back. <laughs> Oh no! No, no, leave me. Oh, hold, hold on to that memory, Mike. So, <laughs> that's why she was so happy. <laughs> so long, a hole. She's skipping. I've yeah. never seen her skip. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the pets had to get groomed, and I said, "She said, are you up for? Uh, you know, I can't watch the baby drop the pets off and do that. So can you at least drive?" I said, "Yeah, I'll drive." So we drive out in the torrential rain down here in West South Florida, and I love calling it, by the way, West South. Florida. I love it. I think it's I your trademark do. now. And uh, we take the dogs in. Now, a uh, side note, later on this afternoon, they called from uh, PetSmart, mm-hmm. and uh, Beluga was getting his nails done, and because he freaked out, he freaks out all the time with the, yeah, 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 but he freaked out to this extent. I've never heard this one before. On two separate occasions, he had explosive diarrhea oh, because hey. he was so stressed out about the other. Uh, he's so pampered. He's so completely pampered that anything that, it, you know, that, that shakes him up at all gives him explosive diarrhea. Diverticulitis. Yeah, I was going to say, a lot of a lot of vets <laughs> might say that's learned behavior. I did not have explosive <laughs> diarrhea, boys. <laughs> Note to me, I did not have explosive diarrhea. The boat but, really stressed him out. It did. The uh, boat, you know what? It. I was thinking about that because you mentioned this yesterday. It could be a really bad diet, and it, it's a stress. I've, I've, I've certainly had stress. bad diet before, but this was concentrated. This was just eating a lot of crap. Almost, uh, I knew when I was coming back here that uh, that the uh, the games were going to be over. The main eating games, and right. I don't know how. I, I don't think I was that sick for two days, but I ended up getting uh, getting eight pounds up in Maine, and I thought I gained maybe forty. You know so, what's, uh, what's you great, know. Mike, is there's actually a book about it. It's very popular with teenagers. It's called the Never Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> Never Hunger Games. Yeah, and I had my bow and arrow, and I was really <laughs> excited about it. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence is in the, uh, the the news. You may not need today. Oh, good. So I I I felt horrible and just crawled back into bed. And I am so out of it. You know, you everybody's been this sick once or twice. You're so sick that you don't even have the energy to channel surf. Yes. You just, if you see something, and what is the movie that I chose? What, I wish you had the soundtrack to it. What is it? Out, of, out Do you have it? I believe oh so. <clears throat> okay. Out of Africa is the movie 
Incidentally, now I have to tell you, this is going to make me a, I'm going to cement my reputation as an old queen, but I believe that this soundtrack, this soundtrack to me, is one of the most beautiful soundtracks ever written for film. Do you know and that I this love actually, it. I love Mike, it more than any. This might be one of the uh, my top, and I'm not exaggerating, this might be one of my top four pieces of music ever written. I hate to overstate it, but it really this does. This composer has written two other scores that you love. Did you know that? Did he write Dances with Wolves? And James Bond. Okay, so because Dances with Wolves and uh, Out of Africa is, is you know very, very similar. John Barry so. is his name. <laughs> it but is let beautiful. Me tell you, but this is... <laughs> Look at this. Oscar's making me laugh. It is beautiful. <laughs> but I'm watching this movie, and the movie, I don't remember. Was the, I don't know if the movie was all that well received by yeah, critics. Yeah, but, but the, the music could be set to anything. I am, I'm imagining you laying in bed... <laughs> Confirmed. Yeah. Someone reading the last rites as a priest there. I was, I was, the well, curtains no, are drawn. I'm getting There's a scene where they're flying in this biplane over Africa, right? And and it's just magnificent uh, cinematography. And it's just <laughs> you're playing the real mellow part of it, not yeah. the majestic. Carla part, walks by with the baby. Yeah, the, she's hoping point, for the best. I swear to <laughs> God, preparing so, for the worst, dabbing tears. <laughs> to make a long story short, Too it's late. the story of this Baroness played by Meryl Streep. And for anybody, stop uh, that, Jim. I want to make sure <laughs> there is that lady. We're going to go on safari. It's in Africa. Right. She has a terrible husband who plays around on her. She divorces. They split up, and she begins to have an affair with Robert Redford. Okay. And uh, now this is classical music from a. This uh, is the uh, this is the that's theme song. Into it. The theme song here. Now, Mike, what it is is that this movie is about thirty years old. It came out in eighty six. Is it really thirty years? And old? as I recall, oh, it was God, well so received old. by the critics, but it wasn't a tremendous box office because it was heavy. It wasn't a feel good film. So heavy. I mean, everything happens to Meryl Streep, and she has this affair with Robert Redford. And uh, I'm sitting, lying in bed, and they take a Sundance movie. And, uh, you know, say a movie's two and a half hours. Yes. Be, we, they put commercials in it, and they edit it, and the movie is like nine hours. Sure. It's a, I stayed it's a in bed day. all day. I watched Out of Africa all day, mm. including the commercials. I learned a lot about, uh, you know, different things, like uh, what to do if I fall. Yeah, you, you know, know there, were, really there are a lot of those commercials that are on the. Uh, do you Sundance feel? Channel. Do you feel those commercials were catering to you? <laughs> they may have been. <laughs> oh, they may they, have been. They break the bias up into demographics, so sure. of course. Yeah. yeah, but it's such a beautiful piece of music. I really love. A lot it. of and the then, shows I watch in the afternoon, Mike, tell me how to get in touch with a lawyer. Should I need one? <laughs> 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 so I'm watching this thing all day long. I am watching this all day, and then finally at the end. Uh, you know, they he wants to be a free spirit and he doesn't want to be get together with her. He she wants to be married. He doesn't you know, the guy wants his freedom, but then he comes back and he says, You've ruined it for me, you know. You've ruined it for me, freedom. And and what he wants what he's saying is he really wants to be with her. Right. And so he's gonna come back to her, but unfortunately his plane crashes and oh, he dies. Oh man, spoiler alert. And spoiler it's, it's alert. Just, uh, yeah, <laughs> thirty years later. I've been watching the movie alert. in hunks and I didn't know how it ended. <laughs> yeah, and and so uh, the thing about this movie is that it's this beautiful, beautiful love story, and I kid you not, Carla comes in. This is last evening. This is how long I've been watching this, and she comes walking in. She says, how you doing, honey? And I swear to God, this is exactly what I said to her. I said to her, like, with tears in my eyes. I was this out of it. I said, oh, no. You're the love of my life. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. You're the love of my life. I'm disgusted. Life. Yeah. Tears in his eyes. Where's my. Uh, hold on a second. Wait a minute. There it is. That's the wrong thing. I didn't want to play that. I wanted to play that. <laughs> oh, you're crying. the love of my life. I love you, Carla. I love you. Uh, it was when she weird. started packing. Was... Yeah, that's why she but left in a striped shirt. <laughs> Also, I figured I'm going to try to do this on camera and see if it works with you guys. Okay. But uh, I figured out the Robert Redford uh, style of acting, and the Robert Redfield, Red, Redford style of acting is to ignore. What so, does he ignore? Uh, what does he ignore? Like, for, so it's, it's like uh, say something like she would say. It's like, why do you always uh, take so long to come back to me? All right, so I'll be Robert Redford. Okay. Okay. Why do you always take so long to come back to me? And he does nothing. <laughs> why do I take so long? He's always looking off in the other direction. Yes. If well, you watch a Robert Redford movie, yeah, it's like he's, he's distracted. Always, 
He's distracted. Or, That's the word. That's the word. He's, he's on a smartphone before there were smartphones. Maybe he's <laughs> just trying to remember his lines. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, the line. For God's sake. It's sakes. the word. No, remember that word. Okay, so when you watch Robert Redford, that's the right word. That is the absolute perfect word for it. When you watch Robert Redford, Note how distracted he appears to be. He seems to be distracted. Yeah, but like he's waiting that's, for that's an email. But not always. Like, if you go back to, like, The Sting, he was focused in The Sting. Was he distracted in the but sailboat sinking were, movie? Did, no, in, uh, in The Natural, he's distracted a lot. Very he's distracted, distracted in The Natural. He, he's distracted an awful lot. In, in fact, there's a, scene, there's a scene where he's at the plate. Mm-hmm. batting in one of the biggest games, and he gets distracted. <laughs> that is that is Robert Redford's tell. That is his acting tell. He is distracted. What's Brad Pitt's tell? You know this. We've talked about it. He's eating. Mm-hmm. All the he time. Eats. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, in yeah, every yeah. scene in um, the Ocean's Eleven trilogy. He eats all yeah. the time. But they've but actually tell. they've actually banned his movies in uh, countries that are going through famine. Really? Because it's just too much torture. <laughs> Where did that come from? He wrote a joke. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> that is that is a joke. Yes. Uh, anyway, so uh, remember that next time you watch a Robert Redford movie, this uh, the the long version of this. Uh, I told you the long version was just to say the next time you watch Robert Redford in a movie, yeah, watch him because that is the perfect word. He appears to be. Distracted. We need I to put find. Ignores. We need to he find the. He's distracted. We need to find his turning point movie because it must have happened sometime in the early eighties. Because he hasn't always been an ignoring actor. Mm. Maybe it was the my, river runs through it. No, that's after the yeah. river about, runs through it. Very he's, distracted. Uh, in that's that. Brad distracted. Pitt. That's Brad Pitt. But oh. he's focused in Legal Eagles, isn't he? Mm. What's that run? Oh, you're being distracted. <laughs> Please don't adopt this style for podcasting. <laughs> we, <laughs> timing is everything. Yeah. Hey, you no, know that's what? That's why we're DJs, though, because we're like hyper not distracted. Apparently, Mac has the same style of acting. <laughs> distracted. As yes. Robert Redford. I'm here, be, uh, outside. That boy's going to be logging some serious road time and picking up a little extra cash in the nice. process next mm-hmm. year. And yeah, they're going to keep the, uh, we got, no, it might not be Mac, but it, it'll be somebody. And we've got to keep the intern train going because I want to use them for those Meanwhile, purposes. Mike, you're going to get a phone call. Is this a Mr. Mike O'Meara? We found your boat in Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, couldn't do anything with it. Uh, anyway, the the, uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about here is uh, a little go USA. Uh, a lot of comments made by that incredible pure hump Donald Trump, who said anybody who has the Ebola virus should stay over in the country and not come to the United States. So, you know, that incredibly myopic, sure. narrow vision of life. If there, if there was ever any validation of how much of an idiot Donald Trump really is, and I don't give a rat's ass how much money he makes, but that guy is a bloviating douche. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the fact is dismissing, uh, you know, people that went over there doing the very purest of work, trying to save people in uh, in Africa that are suffering from this incredible virus. They contract the disease, and they're bringing them back under, you know, perfectly isolated conditions. Amazing and, conditions. And quarantine yeah. conditions to work on it. But the great news, and this to me is a go USA, Everything I watched on the news today indicates that these people are beginning to turn the corner yes. and that they are getting a handle on uh, injecting them with antibodies that are fighting off this virus. And that could be phenomenal. And that is the type of thing that ought to be at the lead of every single newscast, we right. should be screaming that from the highest mountain, not giving publicity to some artificial haired tool mm. that made his money because of his daddy's money that's out there just talking about how how dangerous it is to bring people. You just get shocked. No, no, the uh, the panel fell off the uh, bottom of mm. the console and it gave my finger rather a start. Ouch. I thought you were pulling a Robert Redford on me. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Doesn't it seem like we it, really are curing this, though? I mean, they've got to, you know, they, it's working on these uh, medical yeah, it's, professionals it's that exciting. we're helping people. It's exciting, but it's also modern medicine. The type of care we're giving these doctors, uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's what it's meant to be. What's the, the status of your dad? We discussed on uh, Thursday Oh, he got an email on Saturday about just kind of uh, the hit list of, because they need epidemiolo- epidemiologists to go out there. Right. Um, and and he, what is, I mean, I'll play the idiot because I don't know. What is an epidemiologist? Disease, it, uh, disease doctor. That's yeah, a disease yeah, doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Studies okay. uh, infectious diseases. So you're like diseases. a disease detective. Right. And He's you try like to go Rockford contain. Files with a stethoscope. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not Rockford Files. No, it's not Rockford Files with a stethoscope. If you would open that brain a little bit more, you would have gotten better grades at VCU. <laughs> <laughs> you got great grades. Mike, I don't think I could have gotten much better. <laughs> Granted, it wasn't much of a difficult course. <laughs>
<laughs> Did you get what was your GPA at, at VCU? Three eight, I think. Huh. You couldn't have gotten much better. That's no, cool. good for no. you. It's a curriculum good though. for you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Today we're gonna watch movies and pull the shares into a circle. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, it's called I the American. There. It's called the American University method. That's exactly they what stole it is. It. Yes. So, Rob and I uh, went to similar schools. Yes. Yeah, let's discuss. Lots of discussion, Mike. Right. He uh, he's still up in there. Um, I think he needs to make a decision by next week. It's to definitely actually fly to uh, West Africa. Is yes, I mean they're putting a team together, and he's got to make a decision if he uh, wants it. I think at his, he's seventy-three. I don't know if it's the best play. We'll fi- we'll figure it out, you know. But the fact is, Oscar, he probably understands as much as anybody. Uh, you know the sacrifices that are made by these medical professionals that go over there. Yes. These incredible mm-hmm. people that are, you know, usually sometimes they're on mission trips. Sometimes it's a purely humanitarian thing. Uh, they're still being selfless. Yeah, regardless of what you're pushing. Uh, yep, you are. You are. And 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 to say they should stay there, we should not let them back into the United States. It was uh, it will result in a play. We're going to get to a point we, we have to get to a point where we stop shutting down our brains. Yeah. We are getting more and more hateful. We are getting more and more closed-minded and y- you have to stop. Take politics out of it. Take politics completely out of it. Take the president and the Congress and all that. I'm talking about in general from people that are poorer than us or richer than us or whiter than us or blacker than us. All of that, we have to just lift that up. And we have to, I think, go back to laughing a little bit more. We have to go back and caring about people a little bit more. And, you know, when you see a guy that not and, and I don't think it pissed me off about Trump because Trump is Trump. What pissed me off are all the people that agreed with him mm-hmm. that say, oh, they went over to help people. So it's their fault that they got this disease. Keep them out of our country. You know, no. Bring them back to this country under the proper safe conditions and give them the best treatment we can possibly give because these are American heroes. Here, here. You know what here, I mean? Here. And once Douche again, Mike, Donald Trump. What a pure ass. How great is it that it looks like that uh, because of research, Ebola is on the run? That's a game changer. That's huge. I, you know, and, and if they can get it into that country and quarantine this and actually prevent this from spreading, that's just a triumph. And that's why the people uh, that, that are medical professionals like your dad mm-hmm. and other people that do this are are the, the great human beings. Heroes. These people we ought, Heroes. To be, we ought to be hearing about these and not the Kardashians. We are, these are the people that they ought to have the television yeah, shows Public about. health, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. There's my preach for the day. Anyway, nice. we'll take a break. Come back with some fluffy news that's not serious at all. News you may not need right after this. I've got a great idea, Joe. You're familiar with the Omericast? Yes, it's the uh, Marcus Serta show where he plays highlights from the, all the more network shows. Well, I want our show, the Rob and Joe show to be an Omericast highlight show. (laughs) So you want a show (laughs) that plays highlights of a highlight show. Highlights from a highlight show. Genius. That's the worst idea you've ever had. (laughs) Well, thank you. (laughs) Here's every week at robandjoeshow.com, on iTunes, Stitcher, and on the new Mike O'Mara Show app. For more information, visit us at morebroadcasting.com. Those guys need to relax. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, (laughs) welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. (laughs) Brought to you by Sleep Number Beds. I sure got to know my Sleep Number Bed yesterday. Today. Still love it. Don't care how bad I feel. When I'm lying in that bed, it's the best. I know my sleep number bed loves me, too, because it cares about how I sleep. It does. I, I tell you, uh, the last couple of days, I don't know why I would have been without it. It's fantastic. My sleep number bed is uh, is really the best experience that I've ever had on, on the consumer market. I'm not overstating it. I truly love the bed, and I love it because it contours to my body. It helps me feel good when I wake up, and it helps me feel uh, good when I go to sleep. It's also got Sleep IQ technology. Those are the sensors that work with the dual air technology inside the bed to track and optimize how you're sleeping. The Sleep IQ will allow you to make changes, like adjusting your sleep number setting or daily routine for best possible sleep. Nothing to wear, nothing to turn on. All you have to do is sleep. It's that easy. Now, my sleep number setting is an 80. Carlos is an 85, and there's only one place in the world to find the Sleep Number bed with Sleep IQ technology, and that is at a Sleep Number store. Come in right now where a C2 Queen mattress with Sleep IQ technology starts at just $999.98. You can know better sleep. You can find your Sleep Number setting today at any of the 450 Sleep Number stores nationwide. Find one near you by calling 800-511-0061. That number again is 800-511-0061. And don't forget to tell them that Mike O'Mara sent you. From around the globe, across the nation, looking through your neighbor's window, the Mike O'Mara Show now presents news you may not need. 
a comprehensive look at the stories you may or may not be talking about during your daily activity. And now, news you may not need. All right, we lectured about Donald Trump. Now it's time for fluff, fluff, and more fluff, everybody. Like fluff. Bring the fluff, Mike. Thanks to a movie that saw her drifting through space for an hour and a half, Gravity star Sandra Bullock is this year's top-earning actress. Oh, good for her. Yay! That's uh, according to Forbes. She earned $51 million between June of 2013 and June of this year. So obviously she had a piece of the Gravity back end. Oh, also, but think about Jesse James at Scumbag. Oh, yeah. Like, he legitimately is probably sitting there seeing this and you're like, ah! Ka-ching! Totally messed up. Yeah, totally yeah messed let me up. go yeah. bang the uh, lady with the tattoos. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence made thirty-four million dollars. Uh, that's probably because of Hunger Games, correct? Yeah, that's fair. And also, she's uh, she's nutty. I wonder what she's doing with her money. Uh, number three uh, is Jennifer Aniston with thirty-one million. Here's one that's a wild card. Number four, yeah, Gwyneth Paltrow. I didn't even know she was still making movies. Wow, really? Nineteen million dollars, and then uh, followed by Angelina Jolie and Cameron Diaz, tied at eighteen million. Uh, that those numbers don't make a lot of sense to me. There have to be I thought they get that for like a movie. You well, know you know, what I, mean? there's, I, that's the going mm, I think there's probably some good deals and some bad deals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's Forbes magazine if you got a problem with that story. <laughs> Jim Parsons, speaking of money, Johnny Galecki and Kelly Cuoco signed three year contracts, which will pay them $1 million per episode each. Wow. wow. I can't wait to continue not watching. Jesus. That show. I don't Horrible. get it. The Big Bang. I that triples their previous salaries, which were in the 325 to 350 range. Mm well, they get the Man, cash, and it's one of the biggest shows in America. It's it huge, it's and you know what, successful. Mike? They really should pay Jim Parsons a lot of money just because of his his range. Man, it says here seasons eight through ten are expected to include a total of seventy two episodes, which means they'll rake in seventy two million dollars over the next three years. Yeah, <laughs> enjoy, have fun. But that's fellas. not all. They're also getting a cut of the show's profits. Oh which no! Could make their, which ma- makes their new deals worth anywhere from ninety to one hundred million dollars a piece. Bazinga! <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> sitcoms. I love sitcoms. Uh, speaking of money, Kelsey Zachow. How would you pronounce Z-A-C-H-O-W? Zachow or Zachow? Zachow, I think. Zachow. She's a 24-year-old single mom in Port Huron, Michigan, just outside of Detroit. She works two jobs, and she and her boyfriend have a seven-month-old son. He is also uh, He also has a five-year-old daughter. Kelsey's main job has been working as a medical assistant, and she's also been bartending to bring in extra cash, but I don't think she'll be doing either anymore. Back on June 13th, which happened to be a Friday, the 13th, everybody. Ooh, very scary. Kelsey stopped on her way to work and bought five lottery tickets. For the past five years, she's been buying five tickets twice a week. This time, she used her regular numbers on four of the tickets and random numbers on the fifth one. And the random numbers ended up matching all seven winning numbers, meaning Kelsey... Hit the jackpot mm. for sixty-six million dollars. Good for her. That's very excellent. cool. Like that. She actually didn't know it for almost two weeks, and says that when she finally checked the tickets, she could barely breathe. She turned in the winning ticket last Monday and took the lump sum, so she gets about twenty-seven million dollars after taxes. Wow. What well, you know? What we have to examine in America, though. Seriously, how does? Why can they say sixty-six million dollars when? If she takes the lump sum, it's twenty-seven million dollars. And not only that, Mike, she had a better year than Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> <That's incredible>. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's pretty good. I like that. <laughs> Saturday night's Beyonce Jay Z concert at the Rose Bowl Stadium is making headlines for something other than the duo's stellar performances: a scuffle between two men at the venue, with one of them biting off the other's fingertip. Oh, oh. Matt Bloom. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> the incident. <laughs> was investigated uh, when 25-year-old Roberto Alcaraz Garnica of San Diego groped a woman at the stadium. The woman's boyfriend got into a physical altercation with Garnica, who allegedly bit off a chunk of the boyfriend's finger. Garnica mm. was... Uh, a, am I pronouncing that right, Oscar? Garnica, G-A- that works. G-A-R-N-I-C-A. Garnica, yeah. Garnica was arrested and booked on a charge of mayhem. The boyfriend, listed as in his 20s, was taken to the hospital. <laughs> Mike, don't you love the charge of mayhem? Sounds like they're the Three Stooges short. <laughs> or uh, that commercial for the insurance company. <laughs> uh, sad news, James Brady, former White House press yeah. secretary. Uh, he passed away Monday. He was 73 years old. The quote is here. We are heartbroken to share the news that our beloved James 
Jim Bear Brady has passed away uh, after a series of health issues. That's the family's statement. Uh, he was a pretty brave guy that took that bullet in the head and then uh, went on to become a tireless advocate to yes. end gun violence. A really, really special guy, and uh, sad to see him go. And really was kind of uh, well-liked in the press corps Loved. before the accident as well, before Loved, the shooting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A semi-trailer overturned on an Indianapolis interstate, spilling what police say. Are you ready for this, Rob Spiewak? Bring it. 45,000 packages of butter. Oh, oh no. Wow. That's the crash a- happened about 3.30 a.m. Friday in the eastbound lanes of Interstate 465, just west of uh, the interstate uh, with uh, the interchange with 65 on the city's south side. That's Indianapolis. The crash left thousands of butter tubs strewn on the highway to put this in perspective oscar (laughs) this is enough butter for mike to make four batches of shrimp (laughs) (laughs) police say the truck driver apparently fell asleep that's great and hit a highway barrier no injuries were reported some lanes of the highway were closed for hours while people were steaming lobsters uh no uh, some lanes of the highway were closed for hours for cleanup work with crews using a small front end loader to scoop up the butter tubs and whipped cream containers. Oh, whipped cream spilled out there, Boy, you too. know what? That's As far as traffic goes, that will really clog some arteries. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And now a little something, something from my backyard, everybody. Oh, the Florida grandmother, 68 years old, who was recently caught having sex in a public uh, in a town square at her retirement community. Go, She's Granny, been go. Sentenced. <laughs> they sentenced her to six months in jail after copying a plea to indecent exposure and disorderly conduct. During a court appearance Wednesday, Margaret Clem pleaded to... <laughs> yeah, that's always the best part, Rob. Margaret Clem sure. pleaded uh, to misdemeanor charges filed uh, following her June second arrest at the Villages, which is a sprawling 55 and older community in Central Florida. Yeah. According to a police report, Clem and David Bobilia, 49, mm. uh, they were having sex on the stage in the middle of the village square. Wow. And uh, the police responded to a 911 call about two people having sexual intercourse in public. Uh, <laughs> cops found Clem and Bobilia, who both appeared intoxicated, inside a gazebo around 10.30 <laughs> p.m. Clem's pants, cops noted, were completely removed, and her shirt was pulled down, exposing both her vajayjay and her breasts. Mm. Nice. Babelia was in a similar state of undress. The Sumter County Sheriff's Office uh, discovered, uh, the deputy who discovered the duo having sexual intercourse noted that they both appeared intoxicated. Sure. Clem uh, is uh, going to go to jail for uh, six months, so mm. she's in trouble. Babelia, who lives about 10 miles from the villages, pleaded no contest earlier this month to indecent exposure and disorderly conduct. He was sentenced to 180 days in jail. Okay. And uh, he is currently locked up in the Sumter County Jail. <laughs> Mr. <Wow. Rubilio. laughs> the great news? Yes. The Villages is only about a half day's drive from me. Road trip! Yeah! <laughs> I'm coming to see you, Margaret Clem. Oh, I'd like to see her, Clem. <laughs> um, yes. Well, police discovered that her Clem was exposed. Yes. When they stumbled upon it. We'll take a break. Come back with the audio vault and Rob Spiewak right after this on the Mike O'Mara Show. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. This portion of the Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by our friends at Encore. Now, you know that you need to have life insurance, but you keep stalling, right? Right. Don't stall. There's no time like the present. Put off your procrastination until tomorrow because the future is now, according to Rob Spiewak. True. Don't worry because Encore Insurance is here to help. Encore will survey the most highly rated companies in the insurance industry to compare premiums. They'll do the work so you don't have to. It's all free. There's no obligation, and no salesman will visit you. Do us a favor. Give Encore a try. Not just for us, but do it for yourself. Call toll-free 866-347-5748 to get a free life insurance quote. If you prefer computers, smartterm.com, S-M-A-R-T-T-E-R-M.com. That's where you'll find the license disclaimer and quality customer service. Encore Insurance Services, LLC. Stop paying too much for life insurance. Protect your family the smart way at smartterm.com. And without further ado, let's open up the audio vault for Tuesday, August 5, 2014. Rob Spiewak, take it away. Dateline Seattle. I know we had a lightning strike video last week, but this is another one that's neat for another reason. Do you know you can be struck by lightning even if you can't even see the storm? The actual danger zone for a thunderstorm. 
25 miles. It's 25 oh, wow. miles? This That's guy scary. was getting ready to videotape some lightning. He knew the storm was coming. I saw the video. Blue skies, fluffy clouds. Check this out. This guy didn't see a drop of rain or even a darkness in the sky. Just on the off chance that I can catch a lightning on film. That was really cool. But I don't know what's going to happen. I'll give it a minute here. Just in his neighborhood. Very, very cool to see on film. But... Oh! Wow. He's fine. Oh, my God. Well, he got what he wanted, right? Absolutely. What I love the fact <laughs> Was he's he doing a seance? His a YouTube uh, channel, his caption is, I got struck by lightning today. What happened to you? <laughs> but he's going to be okay. Back, but, in back of the trash trucks, too. But you got you got to be careful. And I didn't realize that, you know, 25 miles is the danger zone, according to the National Weather wow. Service. Uh, it always uh, troubles me, or at least interests me, when big American stars that don't really do a lot of ads in the States go to Japan. And do television commercials? Yeah, and uh, get amazing paydays for So it. let's play a game here, Mike. I want you to try and name these stars that are doing commercials overseas. This first one is from 1991 for Hitachi brand air conditioners. Who's singing this jingle? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday comes again. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. What year? The 1990s. They got a different word for everything. What year was it again? 1991. Do you want to hear the song again? Here we go. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday. And I'll give you a hint. Oh, it's Arnold. No. Oh. But you're not far oh, it's off. not Arnold. He what? couldn't do that. It's a perfect accent. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday. That's Hulk Hogan for Hitachi oh Air Conditioners. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Pretty cool. Now, you'll, you'll get this one, I think. This is for uh, a Japanese sausage company. I thought I'd go all day without using that. Phrase. What is the year for this? <laughs> this, uh, I believe, this is about 20 years ago. There was no year, but it appeared to be 20 years ago. The right. sausage company, Bayern Sausages. Bayern. Is that Mel Gibson? That's Sylvester Stallone speaking <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> God. He still has the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll just throw this. I in. want, incidentally, you know what? You know what? You know what movies do not hold up? What's that? The Rocky movies. You're right. Oh the no. The Rocky movies do Rocky not. Two age Rocky two well. and Rocky one. Oh but, no, they do go. Oh, when's the last them. time you watched them? When's Probably the last like time you year. watched them? I saw Rocky two a year ago. You know what? I, I would you, say, when you see them throw the punch and it's like a foot away from oh, their no, head. Oh, no, I'm not talking about the action. I'm talking about the back. story. Like when oh, he's the like, story's the story's fine, but I, mean, good. The I was watching the fight scenes and it's just yeah. like, I get so tired. I like turtles. No. <laughs> <laughs> These are my fish, Cuff yes, and Link. Yes. Uh, <laughs> He mentioned Arnold. I think you can hear a little bit of Arnold. This is for like a Japanese energy drink. Okay. So this is a long time ago. This is young Arnold. Obviously not that. <laughs> is he speaking Japanese? Hold it, boy! Boy, the boy! Well, if you're thirsty, a boy, the boy, energy drink. Yabo! There we go. Yeah, that's tasty. All right. It was oh, man, also, those Rocky movies really hold up. It was like my the old Arnold before his teeth were fixed, and he'd growl a lot. Hey! Exactly. I, I don't have a tumor. Now, uh, we talked earlier about how the Kardashians are getting lots of attention. Check out the classy move that Khloe Kardashian pulled on the night before Kim's wedding. And by the way, today marks, I believe, day 74 of the Kardashian marriage, which means it's outlasted her last marriage. So congratulations <laughs> for the 74-day marriage. But uh, yeah. Khloe had too much. They have, a, and, uh, they have a cute kid. I saw a picture of the kid. The kid is gorgeous. How could Absolutely they have a kid, gorgeous. Mike? They've only been married two and a half months. Huh. <laughs> no, I'm talking about Kim and Kanye. Oh, okay, okay. It's they a, have a cute kid. Yeah, you know what it is? They had it, Mike. It was conceived out of wedlock because they're sinners. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> but good, uh, Chloe is not a classy dame. Check this out. Chloe, the night before at Versailles, Chloe drank a little too much. So she had to, I had to wake her up. And she was laying down, sleeping, getting her makeup done for the wedding. And I'm just like praying that she'll 
get up in time she to walk down the aisle while she was, while sleeping? She was sleeping. They had to do it while she was sleeping. <laughs> she was so hungover. And I'm this like, This is what you coroners guys. do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. Wow. They do. Wow. She was not, Mike, not mm. able to get up to get her makeup on. So they had to do yeah. it while she was asleep. Classy That family. used to be me back in the day when I was drinking a lot. I used to always... Always, you know, Jimmy Cerrito would come by my house to uh, put my makeup on. And you would go Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday. And then I go, Badui, Badui. And, uh, Sounds I, like Baba Booey. I don't know if you've heard this. They're thinking about the new reboot of Ghostbusters might be an all female cast. Have you guys heard this? There's a rumor that Sony may relaunch the Ghostbusters movie franchise with an all female cast. What? Yeah. <laughs> Who are you going to call and then never be able to get off the phone with because you won't believe what her sister just did? <laughs> That's your Magic Audio Vault. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. That concludes our broadcast day, but dry your eyes. It's not goodbye. Just so long. You can always write us a letter, you know. Send it to TMOS PO Box 2796, Lisburg, Virginia 20177. Email all technical queries to Ponyboy at MikeOmeraShow.com. And if you'd like to be a part of the legendarily popular Thursday mailbag segment, we want a real good one for this Thursday. We've been really light this week, so step up, folks. Send me some mail, all right? Send some mail. They don't have to be birthday requests. They can be funny letters, too. Questions, anything, yeah. What's your beef? Get it off your chest. Drop a line to the jolly one. Rob at MikeOmeraShow.com. He's lonely. He'd love to hear from you. Help me, please. And remember, uh, the official e-voice line remains 800-440-8167. For Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana, I'm Michael Maris saying so long, everybody. Ciao, Bye. ciao. Hi, this is Mike O'Mara here to remind you that if you're starting a business, forming an LLC, or getting a will, LegalZoom will provide the personal attention you need to help take care of the details. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but provides self-help services at your specific direction. Enter discount code TMOS for more savings at LegalZoom. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. <laughs>